Did you know that the US and UK version of the Dennis the Menace comic strip were both first published on the exact same day, without either artist having knowledge of the other's existence? Sometimes this happens in TV land too. Two shows with similar premises will be in development and get released very close to one another. Sadly, this often leads to the one show being seen as inferior to the other and fading away into obscurity. These are the shows we'll be looking at today, the ones that just couldn't hack it against a familiar looking foe. And so with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 TV shows that embarrassed other shows released at the same time. Number 10. Farscape Embarrassed Lex Sci-fi TV shows are a dime a dozen these days, so you really have to come up with something interesting if you want to stand out. How about a show that takes place aboard a ship that's also a living entity? How many of those can there be? Well, as it turns out, there's at least two. The first to premiere was Lex, which was on screens from 1997 to 2002, a Canadian-German co-production with some financial input from the UK's Channel 5, Lex takes place over several thousand years, tracking the lives of the crew aboard the titular organic spacecraft. Unfortunately, this unique premise did little to appeal to viewers. Whilst the show has garnered a cult following in recent years, at the time, it was slated for its bizarre humour, smutty content and poor storylines. Two years after Lex first appeared, the Australian-American produced Farscape showed up and completely pulled its trousers down. The show, which followed a similar concept, won multiple awards and helped guide sci-fi TV out of the Star Trek era. James Gunn even called it an inspiration for his Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Which says it all, really. Number 9. Joan of Arcadia Embarrassed Wonderfuls Starring Joe Mantegna, Mary Steenburgen and Amber Tamblin, Joan of Arcadia ran for two seasons on CBS between 2003 and 2005. Tamblin plays the lead role, a teenage girl who communicates with God after the Almighty spared her brother's life during a car accident. Joan's interactions with Heaven make up the bulk of the show's storylines, which also weaves your standard family drama. Fans marvelled at how it expertly juggled such a wide variety of topics and themes. What they were less keen on is a show that debuted one year after. Wonderfuls also featured a young woman who got advice from mystical beings, except hers were in the form of wax animals rather than the creator. Jane Tyler works in a gift shop near Niagara Falls and gets life advice and instructions from the various knickknacks on the shelves. Whilst the show was fine for what it was, it ultimately ran its course and was axed after a single season. Joan of Arcadia just had more going for it and had more time to put things into action. Also, it had a pun in its name, so it wins every time. Number 8. The Dropout Embarrassed Inventing Anna Whilst not 100% similar, both of these miniseries from 2022 are based on real-life tales of women who lied and cheated their way into positions of prominence. Inventing Anna chronicles the life of Anna Sorokin, a con woman who defrauds wealthy New York socialites into financing her exclusive art club. As for The Dropout, which is based on a podcast, that's about Elizabeth Holmes. Miss Holmes founded the company Theranos and claimed that she had pioneered a method of blood testing that was quick, easy and effective. Spoiler alert, it was none of these things. With Amanda Seyfried at the helm and the writing talents of new girl creator Elizabeth Merriweather, The Dropout did everything but flunk. It was a smash hit, opening to rave reviews and scoring tons of awards. As for Inventing Anna, well, the show wasn't on the same level. It was tonally all over the place and just didn't grip audiences in the same way The Dropout did. The two even went up against each other in a Best Actress category at the Golden Globes, which The Dropout won. Number 7. Married with Children Embarrass the Tortellis When actor Ed O'Neill turned up in Modern Family as the grumpy, cantankerous Jay Pritchett, many saw this as a natural progression of his character Al Bundy from the hit sitcom Married with Children. From 1987 to 1997, the Bundy family, which also included Peggy and Kelly, entertained audiences across America with their unconventional take on family life. Meanwhile, on a different channel, another unorthodox clan was attempting to do the same, and they had some serious firepower behind them. The Tortellis was a spin-off of Cheers, focusing on side characters Nick and Loretta. They were also a dysfunctional family outside of the typical sitcom mold, and their show also premiered in 1987 except theirs only lasted four months. Viewers just couldn't get into the Tortellis, especially amongst the Italian-American community, who felt that the show was doing them a disservice. 
As for Married with Children, that's widely regarded as an American comedy institution, with frequent references to it still being found across pop culture today. Number 6. Yellow Jackets Embarrassed the Wilds There is a long and rich tradition of TV shows about people getting stranded in harsh environments. Gilligan's Island, Wrecked, that one with the weird smoky thing, you know the one. It was called Misplaced or something like that. Two of the newer entries into this esteemed heritage are Amazon Prime's The Wilds and Showtime's Yellow Jackets. The Wilds was the first to premiere, hitting the streamer in late 2020. It's about a group of young women who, guess what, get stranded on an island after a plane crash. Although this one is actually part of a sadistic social experiment. Hmm. As for Yellow Jackets, this one doesn't feature an island at all. Instead, it's split across two timelines as a group of female soccer players crash land in a forest in Canada. Both shows are good, don't get us wrong, but Yellow Jackets just about edges it in terms of quality and recognition. It's been nominated for and won many more awards than its counterpart, and it's much more popular if the internet is anything to go by. Amazon must have realised this as they put the wilds out to pasture in 2022 after just two seasons. Number 5. Bewitched, Embarrassed, I Dream of Genie. How a lawsuit wasn't involved in this one is utterly mystifying. The sitcom Bewitched is considered by many to be among the first great examples of the genre. It has the situation, the home of a suburban family in the 1960s, and it had the comedy, the wife was an actual witch with magical powers. If you're wondering what the first episode of WandaVision is based on, this is it. Then there's I Dream of Genie, a show that hit the airwaves one year after Bewitched. It was set in a suburban home in the 1960s, only this time the wife was a genie instead of a witch. How original. The programme was actually conceived as a rival to Bewitched, but really the two just existed separately from each other. Both ran for a decent length of time and both still hold up alright today, but in terms of cultural weight, Bewitched takes the cake hands down. Did I Dream of Genie get a 2005 movie adaptation starring Nicole Kidman and Will Ferrell? Didn't think so. Although that movie did suck, so maybe we shouldn't have brought it up. Number 4. Airwolf Embarrassed Blue Thunder In a move so painfully 80s it hurts, there were two different shows featuring helicopter crews on TV at the same time in the middle of the decade. The most famous of the duo was undoubtedly Airwolf, which was about the various antics surrounding the titular chopper. Get a load of this, the main character in that show was called Stringfellow Hawk. Stringfellow Hawk. And this is the good one. On the other end of the spectrum was Blue Thunder, based on the 1983 movie of the same name. Once again based around a hyper-advanced helicopter and its crew, Blue Thunder went to air just 16 days before Airwolf did. However, the show was cancelled after just 11 episodes, whilst its competitor racked up 80. All 80s action shows look cheap to some extent, but Blue Thunder looked really cheap. The fact that they cobbled together most episodes out of old footage from the film certainly didn't help matters. When it comes to campy, ridiculous TV shows featuring whirlybirds, then Airwolf is the one most people will think of. Although, why they would be asked a question like that is a mystery. Number 3. 30 Rock Embarrassed Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip Nobody is perfect, but few come closer to that mark than scriptwriting deity Aaron Sorkin. The man behind The West Wing, The Social Network, The Trial of the Chicago 7, The Newsroom and Moneyball is amongst one of the greatest and most respected writers in the game today. And he got his backside served to him on a silver platter by Tina Fey. Sorkin's show Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip is a look behind the scenes of a fictional Saturday Night Live-style comedy show. Matthew Perry and Bradley Whitford star as the show's head writer and producer respectively, as they attempt to keep their program on the air as the world falls apart around them. This concept sound familiar? Well if not, then you've obviously never heard of 30 Rock. Created by and starring Faye, alongside the likes of Alec Baldwin, Tracy Morgan and Jack McBrayer, 30 Rock is also about the creation of a fictitious sketch show that draws heavily on SNL. The only difference is that Faye's series ran for seven seasons, while Sorkin's could only manage one. Ha! Take your Oscar and shove it, Sorkin! Sorry, got a bit carried away there. Number 2. ER Embarrassed Chicago Hope ER and Chicago Hope are both dramas set in hospital, and if you couldn't already tell from the title of the latter, both shows are also set in Chicago. Both shows also put out their first episode in 1994. September of 1994. One day apart from each other. 
It's Dennis the Menace all over again. There's not much room for manoeuvre when it comes to this sort of thing, so both shows are essentially the same. Where they differ though is in popularity and longevity. Chicago Hope lasted a respectable six seasons before bowing out in the year 2000. As for ER, that ran for 15 seasons and is the second longest running US medical drama of all time behind Grey's Anatomy. Because let's be honest, Grey's Anatomy will still be here when the sun burns out. ER also has the distinction of being the show that launched George Clooney, which is enough to win it this battle on its own. Whilst Chicago Hope wasn't a bad show, it just had the unfortunate sense to go head to head with an absolute juggernaut. Maybe if it had been launched at a different time, we'd have a different story. Number 1. Sherlock Embarrassed Elementary The obsession with Arthur Conan Doyle's most famous creation in the early 2010s can be traced back to Guy Ritchie's first Sherlock Holmes movie from 2009. Whether directly or indirectly, this spawned a series of Holmes-related media in the years to come, most notably two popular TV shows across both sides of the Atlantic. On the British side, you had Sherlock. Backed by the BBC, it starred Benedict Cumberbatch as the troubled detective and Martin Freeman as his long-suffering sidekick. Over the course of 90-minute long episodes, the two would solve modern-day equivalents of some of Holmes' most famous cases. As for the US, they got Elementary, which put British actor Johnny Lee Miller under the deerstalker. His companion was Lucy Liu, playing a female version of John Watson. Whilst Sherlock was a set of mini-movies, intricately crafted and written, Elementary was just another police procedural masquerading as more than it actually was. The British show felt like a real effort to bring these great tales into the 21st century, whilst its American cousin came across as a greedy cash grab. Despite having 140 episodes more than Sherlock, Elementary couldn't hold a candle to it. Case closed. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.